In this video, we are going to look at the logic behind the formula for mode of a grouped data. We will derive this formula as directly as possible. Okay. So here is an example of a grouped data. We have class intervals and the frequency of the data falling in its intervals. We can clearly see that the highest frequency is 12. Therefore, this makes 10 to 15 as the modal class. But when we say mode of data, we have to have a single value, not a class, right? So you might say that the mid value of the modal class, which is 12.5, might be the mode. But you have to understand that frequency preceding and succeeding to this frequency have influence on the value of mode and since frequency preceding 12 has more weightage than the frequency succeeding it we can conclude that the value of mode is less than 12.5 hence our mode lies in between 10 and 12.5 and in this data the value of these terms are lower limit is 10 we have to look at the lower limit of modal class and h is the class interval which is 5 f1 is the frequency of modal class which is 12 and f0 is the frequency of the preceding class which is 7 f2 is the frequency of the succeeding class which is 5 now to understand this formula you will need two concepts concept of slope of a straight line or a tangent and properties of parabola all right so we are going to utilize these two concepts in order to get this formula here the horizontal axis represents class interval and vertical height represents the frequency this is the model class which we can see has the highest frequency and it has lower limit l here f1 is the frequency of the model class f0 is the frequency of the previous class and f2 is that of the succeeding class and since f1 is highest among these three there is first increase in frequency and then decrease in frequency let's say m1 and m2 are the slope of these lines now if you are in a situation like this where we have three known values right at a definite distances and we have to make interpolation for new values our new value is mode so if you are in a situation like this we use parabola passing through these three points and if we had two points and use those to interpolate we would have used a straight line right but here we have three points so we are using parabola so now we can see that the value corresponding to this peak point is the mode of our data right so if you understand this geometry half of the job is done okay now we use properties of parabola to determine how far this mode is from the lower limit we are going to find out this distance now here slope m1 is given by f1 minus f0 divided by h and the magnitude of slope of this line is given by f1 minus f2 divided by h note that slope of this line is always negative but i've written its absolute value here as f1 minus f2 divided by h and now one interesting property of parabola is that the slope of line connecting any two points of a parabola here we have slope m1 connecting these two points of parabola is equal to the slope of tangent to the parabola at the midpoint of the domains of the corresponding points all right so here tangent at l lower limit l is equal to m1 why because l is the midpoint of the domains corresponding to these two points right l is the midpoint of these two points similarly m2 is the slope of tangent of parabola at upper limit 
Therefore, if you look at the slope of tangents, the slope linearly decreases from m1 to 0 and then to minus m2 within distance h, right? So, rate of change of slope of this parabola is m1 plus m2 divided by h. Now, this is the most important observation we got from the geometry because it defines the nature of our parabola. That is the rate of change of slope of this parabola is m1 plus m2 all divided by h. Now at mode, the tangent is flat, which means slope is 0. And since tangent at L is m1 and tangent at mode is 0, the distance we have to move to get to the mode is equal to m1 which is change of slope that you get as you move from L to mode divided by the rate of change of slope per unit distance which is m1 plus m2 divided by h. So in order to get to the mode we have to add this distance to L1 right. So our mode is L plus this distance. Now here m1 is proportional to f1 minus f0, m2 is proportional to f1 minus f2, so m1 plus m2 is 2f1 minus f0 minus f2. So from here you can see how we get to the formula and now we can understand this formula by directly looking at it, alright. Here f1 minus f0 represents the slope m1 which is the change of slope as you move from L to mode and this denominator with H represents the rate of change of slope which is M1 plus M2 divided by H. So I hope you understood this. Thank you for watching. If you like this video you can subscribe for more videos like this. Have a good time.